two things that I want to read to you. One of the first things that I want to read to you is actually from, again, it's the Gospel of Sophia. This one's from volume two, page 104. And it says within here that from the higher wisdom teachings that blood is a gas, not a liquid. When the spinal column is observed by one with spiritual sight developed, the spinal gas appears like a thin stream of light, the color of which differs according to the temperament of morals so the color changes based on the person and where their consciousness is aligned. In the, sens in the sensual man, the spinal fire is a dull brick red. Intermingled with a very slight color of blue. His as, as his aspirations rise, so as his consciousness begins to be in that seek of who am I and becoming one with the ineffable essence, as his aspirations rise and his love for others is awakened, this color becomes clearer and the blue light with a slight coloring of pink is drawn upward. When one observes the spinal gas of the spiritually awakened man who has purified his mind and body by high ideals and by a life of service, especially if observed while he is in meditation or prayer, there is seen a most wonderful sight. The spinal fire is of a most ethereal blue which is difficult to describe. And I wanna give you guys an experience again when we talk about what is it to be a blue ray or a blue flame holder, that we have the potential within us, but that it, it cannot be awakened unless we create the path of devotion to igniting that flame within us. And as we be this flame of light, I want to add two things because it's very interesting because the color red came through. And when I was creating the, the email for the Soul Circle this evening, I got called to, there is a, a website um, and it's a website with the 21 Taras on it and it is a picture and a depiction of all the 21 emanations of tara so she is our divine mother she is one of them what is she tara is one of the many names of our divine mother tara kuan yin shakti kali hathor isis sekhmet bast divine cosmic dragon mothers nix chaos Hecate, call her any name you want, whatever name you resonate with. These are all the different emanations of which she expresses herself. And within the Tara lineage, there is the 21 Taras. And I decided to just scroll through and one of the names just resonated for me. And so I grabbed it up. And as I grabbed that it up, it was actually quite uh, a beautiful, and I'll, I'll actually just read it really, really quickly, because the beauty of it was about a red Tara, and this divine red Tara, uh, just give one second. And this divine red Tara, she is Tara Pagme Nonma the boundless subduer who binds enemies, robbers, thieves, and hunters. That she is peaceful and golden red in color like clouds at sunrise. With her magical power, she subjugates bandits, robbers, thieves, and hunters, and all enemies, 
establishing sentient beings in bliss. Upon her uptala, the flower is a stupa. From the hung in her heart, the rays of light in form of countless hung syllables, so the mantras radiate out, peaceful and quick to tame sentient beings, she stamped her two feet on the earth. So as we imagine this, she banishes that which wants to steal, that which wants to cause harm, that which wants to create chaos upon the earth. She banishes with peacefulness and love in order to bring back the bliss. And I thought this was so immaculate and so beautiful, but you can also feel her tangibility, her rawness, her creativity within her and her power, because then what does she do? She stomps her two feet up on the earth. What is she doing is she is actually creating that connection to the material realm as she is bringing that reverberation, that passion, that desire, and that intention into the material reality. She is showing us to how to be this state of that bliss. But that within bliss, that most times we want to completely leave the body and she is inviting us to come present even more into the body. And so as I was sitting right before our moment to, to really start the Zoom, I was holding the Kali cards, the Kali oracles, and I just was with them giving homage and prayer and just holding the sacred space for us this evening. And I asked Divine Mother Kali which energy she wanted to show us in representation for what we were doing. And we got Kurukula. She just, she, she's the exact same representation of the red Tara. <laughs> and it says, she is vibrant red, pulsating with feminine power and enlightened activity, infusing our hearts with her capacity for sacred sorcery to conjure and create according to love's guiding wisdom. To receive the divine inheritance of blessings and support for sacred fulfillment, Certain karmic conditions that resonate at lower frequency need to be cleared away. The lesson is to release, to receive. Kuru Kula symbolizes a time of rapid movement in your life path and freedom to attract what you need and want. However, you must be willing to let go of negativity and that which does not belong in your world. It is just so divinely beautiful to me how they share these wisdoms and these messages with us. And that as each of you are going through whatever challenges you are going through, have a funness and a curiosity to how the signals and the symbols are coming through. Because they are truly taking us into a path more of becoming one. And in love with our body, but not so much as an identification with our body, where we are learning how to say, well, I am not my body, but my body is an absolute gift of the Divine Mother that is our temple, our chalice, our container. And it's our cosmic universe to become enveloped within with curiosity. And as we began to dive in, we can start to have the immense and immaculate love of becoming aware of all of our five subtle bodies. And within this awareness and this curiosity of our five subtle bodies, that the journey that we are going to continuously keep communicating about as, as I, th I think they're saying until we get it 
is this awareness of beginning to understand our different layers? We have our physical body, our afu. And then we have our, we have within, as we begin to either see it through the seven layers or the five layers, we're going to kind of uh, talk about it a bit through the five layers. And then we get to see that there is our physical body, but then there's our emotional body, right? So many times our first challenge is that we identify with our body. I am hurt. I am sick. I am uh, and, and oh my gosh, I don't even, I, I have a hard time verbalizing a lot of it because I'm like, ah, I don't want to say it, but <laughs> all of the, the negative ways we've ever talked about our body, we've all at some point disliked something about our features, our looks, or the way that our body is, and that even the way our body ages, but here is a key thing, and this comes from the Vedas, this comes from the motherland of Mu teachings, this comes from our core wisdoms. Anything that is in movement is not you. It is something that has been dreamed into movement. But it is not you. So you can recognize that each of you are in a body that looks completely different from the moment you were born. We can recognize that. Yet at the same time, we still identify with it so much that we think that, well, I am, and then we'll still hold on to the beliefs that we thought about ourselves, about our body, say maybe when we were 13. And for most of us, there's a lot of weird thoughts we thought, especially around 11, 12, 13, and 14, because those were our initiation years of when we were starting to learn our sacred sexuality and our body was going through this most major transformations that most children upon the earth don't get the sacred initiations shared with them correctly you realize most boys learn about their body and sex through porn or through conversations with their peers most young girls Consider the sacred menstruation and that flow of that sacred starfire upon the earth as a curse or that which should not be named. And as we begin to understand this, we're starting to realize that there is so many distortions within then what moves into our emotional body and the emotions we have picked up and we feel which are ever changing. Our emotions move from radical joy and bliss down to suicidal depression. They can move the gamut of literally being so in an elated state of bliss that you are leaving your body all the way to the lowest spectrum of suicidal energy that you would leave your body. Can you see that spectrum? That both spectrums are trying to leave the body. <laughs> and every emotion in between. But it's not even a curiosity for us at this point to imagine that emotions move. They're, all, they're constantly changing. So our body, you're not even in the same body you were in yesterday or the day before, let alone five years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or the moment you were born. So our gift is to begin to understand the, the flow and the movement of spirit is the experience. And that when we become the observer of the experience, we began to detach from those places we have bound ourselves or superimposed upon ourselves belief systems about what it is to have a body or be in a body or how we feel about ourselves. 
The same goes for our emotional vibrations that we start to realize we are not our emotions and our emotions are probably the least trustworthy thing upon our planet aside from our mental plane. And then you can imagine that your mind, your mental plane is constantly changing. That you might somehow still identify with yourself from the same beliefs you had about how you thought with your family as a child. But yet, if you were to go back in time and be in that mind of that child, it would seem like a foreign land to you. You could not identify with how you thought at five. And you definitely could not identify with how you thought at one or as a fetus within the womb. Most of us can't even identify with who we were five years ago or 10 years ago. So when we begin to realize, well, then the mind is always changing. So then that must mean that I am not my mind. And as we begin to surrender our identity with these different bodies, we start to become pulled into the templates where these fields are created from. We begin to even begin to merge into the realms that we might call the realms of the day uh, of, of, of the angelics or our higher selves. But even within those fields, there is movement. And they are yet but another representation of how we are moving through creation and how we are being the architects and the dreamers of our dream. And so now as you begin to even identify with this, there, there comes a point where these beings, whatever aspects you resonate with, Whatever representations of the divine you resonate with that, that create a sense of you to be madly in love and hungered for more of that love and to be one with it. Find that path and never let it go. Because that is your path to awakening. And that is your path to realizing that the Divine Mother has taken many, many forms so that you would find her somewhere. To her, it doesn't matter where. If it's a squirrel, if it's a cat, if it's a, an embodiment or an emanation of her, if it's the clouds, if it's the flowers in your garden, she has given of herself in many, many names that you might have many places to find her, that you might fall madly in love again and realize that path of love is the place you begin to remember that when you get into the void, you are looking at you. Mm -hmm. 